Hello everyone, this is Darren here with Creativity Unleashed. This is part two of building your own air compressor. In this video, we'll be wrapping up things, getting the paint done, the variable frequency drive installed, and getting everything running and the air compressor in operation. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, here I'm up on top of the tank. Here's the tank head, here's the motor mount. I don't have a lot of space to move back. But let's just show you guys how you mark the oval part to cut out, it's super simple. You get the tank all leveled and adjusted correctly. I'm not gonna actually mark it right now because I'm holding the phone, but you can see the idea. So you just stick your block of wood, I'm making it a little deeper, the mark. And so then I'm gonna just slide across and add a new mark on there. And then I can just plasma cut that. All right, I'm gonna just freeze hand this line with the plasma cutter. You could obviously make like a template jig and it'd make it a little prettier, but we can always just clean up with the grinder. It's not super precise, so. All of the plasma cutting has been done with the Hypertherm Power Max 30. In my opinion, Hypertherm makes probably the best plasma cutter. Not too bad. Alright, so this will obviously need a little cleaning up, knock some rust off. Alright, so I marked out and center punched um, where the compressor head goes. And then over here, I used a piece of angle iron and um, used the magnetic um, squares to hold it in place and then I just got it adjusted and did the groove slot here um, so you can see move these out of the way and there I have the slots which now I just have to cut the final little bits out and then I'll have the groove so that the motor can slide back and forth to adjust for the pulley. The piece I'm using to make the compressor Head and motor mount plate is just a piece of 3 16th inch plate bent to custom dimensions into a channel section. So I got the top base um, tacked on, put just two levels on there, got it adjusted, but that was boring to show you. We'll show you welding it up a bit more, I suppose. And then right here in the center of that um, one side, this is the center point. I'm going to use the hole saw to at least drill and get it marked real well. With that, and then I'll probably use the plasma cutter so I can leave just a little tab and then take a screwdriver and bend it out so that the piece doesn't fall inside the tank because that'd be sort of annoying. I mean, not that you couldn't get it out, but it would drive you nuts trying to roll it around. All right, so, and then it'll also get one more probably on the front side right here. Now looking back on it, it may have not been the best idea to weld the entire seam simply because of expansion and contraction issues that could occur. If you look at a lot of commercially made machines, they're not welded entirely. Alright, so of course the seam's fully welded here, and I'm going to just take off this sharp edge to make the tank look kind of cooler. <laughs> So to help protect the bit um, on the hole saw, I'm going to pre-drill it and then um, use the hole saw to mark it like I did before. the gas metal arc welding slash a MIG welding is done with the Tweco Fabricator 252i which is now made by ESOB. Um, a very good multi-process machine. Um, they're, it's mainly focused on MIG welding and stick welding. It does do good lift TIG if you're into doing lift TIG. Alright, I made a makeshift um, layout of what I'm going to do for the pressure switch, pressure gauge, and pressure relief valve. I'm gonna just add another um, reducer 
um, fitting into there and just weld it in place and um, that should work out well. So this is probably the biggest problem and mistake I made. I used um, cast iron fittings and it turns out they're not weldable. Um, they just don't really mix. Being able to weld them with the um, steel, it didn't seem to matter what I did, whether I was preheating or a bunch of stuff. Um, they kept leaking water even without pressure. Um, I think you can use galvanized. I've used galvanized on other projects and never have had any trouble. Um, but I was trying to save a little money. But anyway, ended up using 304 stainless. Worked out perfectly well. All right, try two here. We got the pressure washer hooked up. I've replaced all of them with 304 stainless. TIG welded them in with stainless filler. Um, you can see I have it bleed, bled the system. There might be a dash of air in the lump top, which is probably not ideal, but well, I guess I have to live with that. I don't think I can tip the tank and it. it's too heavy. It weighs probably like 800 pounds. Um, so yeah, I'll screw that on and we'll pressure test it. All right, so it's at 220. There you go. And it's holding pressure fine. We got one little drip on the Teflon here. Everything's holding the pressure just fine. We have no drips, no pinholes. Everything's looking good. So after getting the water drained out of the tank, we poured in a gallon of muratic acid and then um, rolled it all around to um, clean off any rust that um, could have developed and also to etch the metal so that the paint will stick better. Here I have a Milwaukee heat gun heating it up, got the tank really hot right after we washed it to get out any moisture or vapor so it wouldn't flash rust. So I got um, a thousand grams, which would be a, a equivalent to about a liter of um, red oxide, two part epoxy mixed up. And I put in just a little bit of epoxy thinner so that um, it would coat the inside right. I really don't know how much to do. I'm hoping this is enough to coat the whole inside. So after rolling the tank every which way, we made sure that um, we got all the internal surfaces covered with the two-part epoxy, and here we're draining out the excess um, paint, and um, then we're spraying it here with three-component primer at the automotive section and the hardware. They um, hooked me up with that and said it would be the best against vibration and protecting the tank, and then um, had a um, metallic paint color mixed up for the tank which is one of my favorite colors for doing shop equipment and stuff with. Here is the air compressor room slash inverter utility room. So I got a variable frequency drive here on the wall and it's wired up where the um, when the two contacts of the pressure switch let it know that it needs to turn on or turn off. I'll do that. Um, it's set in place and um, I marked it with a sharpie on all the points after I got it put where I wanted it. And I had a friend who works with rubber make these um, rubber mounts. These are out of old tractor tires. Um, so I'm planning to use these anchors here. So now the tank is just about perfectly mounted nicely on these rubber feet and I got it pretty much leveled here. All right, so this is what I have for the bottom of the tank. Here is the drain system. It has the um, drain valve. It has the little hole and I made sure that is um, at the bottom. So right here is the drain all finished up. All right, so I got the motor and compressor put into place, got their screws put in. I'm going to first put on the um, wheel right here and then um, align it with the pulley on the motor. Get that all adjusted before I uh, get them tightened down and try to get the belts on them. First put the oil in the compressor. So I've got the air compressor pretty much finished up here. 
Um, a few things that I guess I knew about air compressors, sort of, but I didn't really think it through very well, is you're supposed to have a check valve where the air comes in off the compressor head, and that helps keep um, the pressure of the air from like bleeding through the rings and stuff and the little flap in the compressor head, as well as when the motor goes to start, um, it has a system on the pressure switch that um, when the motor turns off, it releases a little bit of air out of the um, out of the tubing and off the head. So then when the motor goes to restart, when you've consumed some of your air, it doesn't have the full load on it. So then it starts up and then it once it reaches the equal equilibrium pressure of what's in the tank, then it starts filling the tank um, with air. So um, yeah, I still don't have that on there yet. Um, so it's not kicking on and off correctly. And also, um, this pressure switch is for a water pump and it's not really ideal, it won't work for that. So I guess this pretty much wraps up the air compressor build video. Obviously there is the check valve and the new pressure switch that I need to install, but as you can see everything is working um, very well in the system. I have the of course refrigerant air dryer hooked up and it works really well. Um, so yeah, I guess I might do a short update once I get that done, but um, it's working really well. I got the frequency drive running it well and everything is looking good. So. Hope you guys had fun and enjoyed the video and um, learned something. If you have any questions about things, um, I'd be happy to try to answer them if I can. And you guys have a great one. Thanks.